A very common physics question revolves around flying projectiles and calculating what happens to them in the air. This is just something from a calculus book. A projectile is fired with a muzzle speed of something and an angle of elevation of something at a certain position. And you're trying to plot the trajectory. I think that's pretty boring. Instead, we have a real cannon, a real projectile, and we're going to plot the function in the air using VHS tape. So when a projectile is launched in a constant gravity field, like this hay field on Earth's surface, it flies in a parabolic trajectory. When an object is in motion, its motion in any direction or component is going to remain the same unless it's acted upon by some force. So the fact that gravity only points down means that the sideways motion of the projectile is unaffected. It actually will keep moving at a constant velocity in the, side, in the horizontal direction and it will only change its speed in the vertical direction. Acceleration due to gravity, so the acceleration that that projectile felt while it was in the air is 10 meters per second squared, but that's a horrific way to phrase it. You should never phrase it as 10 meters per second squared. It's actually 10 meters per second per second, which is technically equivalent, but it's a lot easier to understand. If the projectile's upward velocity, even if it's moving sideways at Mach 1, if its upward velocity is 20 meters per second, one second later, its upwards velocity is going to be 10 meters per second because every second its velocity decreases by 10 meters per second. So it's 10 meters per second per second. In another second it will have stopped and another second after that it will be going down at 10 meters per second. Every second of time that passes, the velocity decreases by that increment. So gravity is really 10 meters per second per second. When everything works just perfectly like that, and you get the sideways motion unaffected and the vertical motion only affected by the force of gravity, which is a constant acceleration. The shape of the trajectory that it, it maps out in the sky is a perfect parabola. But careful eyed viewers may note that this was not actually a perfect parabola. It was close, but it's sort of asymmetrical. When a projectile is flying through the air, friction with the air slows it down. This is the effect of drag. It's a really complicated thing to actually calculate. I didn't learn how to do that until my second of three semesters of classical mechanics in undergrad. But it basically just adds one extra force to the equation. And instead of being something like gravity, which is a constant force downwards, which is really easy to calculate, it's a force that is continuously changing in magnitude and direction. So it's a serious pain if you want to calculate it precisely. The force of drag is proportional to the speed of the object through the air, so a faster object is going to experience a greater drag force, and that force is always pointed in the direction opposite the projectile's motion. So if you have something that's arcing in a parabolic trajectory, the force of drag is pointing in a different direction the entire time it's flying. You can see the VHS tape slow the projectile slightly, contributing to the drag it felt. But even so, the flight path looks very nearly parabolic. Plus, high-speed shots like this are always fun. This method with the VHS tape is actually really cool. You can use it to visualize almost any random motion, even really complicated things like a boomerang. probably wondering why I'm standing out in the rain right now. And of course if you haven't read the video title, that answer is going to surprise you. I'm currently standing out in the rain in order to calculate the value of pi, which I'm doing with this apparatus right here, and the randomness of falling raindrops. I like building analog electronics, but to call this thing an analog computer is a bit of an understatement. This is actually using 
the physical shape of the device and the randomness of rain falling on it to calculate the value of pi. Uh, 